Okay, so I'm actually having a conversation with my guests behind the scenes before we actually come on screen. Now, this man has actually paved the way for more than probably like millions of uh, people you see on radio or hear their voice on radio and see on TV. Some of us grew up admiring his talent and always wish to do what he is still doing. I can't say what's doing. He started over two decades ago. In fact, more than four decades ago, I must say. <laughs> and he's been part of the top three radio presenters we have in Ghana. When you mention top three radio presenters, you cannot mention without the name Kwame Sifa Kai. When you tune in to radio in the morning and you hear awesome oh yeah, oh yeah, then you know <coughs> that the man's voice is going to be heard. Good morning, Kwame. Good morning, my darling. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm very well. I, I realize you have a good singing voice too. I do? Well, better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Any voice that morning. is better than mine is a good voice. Oh, but you sing every morning, and, and you go well, to the baritone, and I'm like, I Ooh. sing off-key. I sing a bochi part. <laughs> I just sing, so what I do is I make a joyful noise mm, unto, unto the, the Lord. Lord. <laughs> I haven't said I'm part of a choir. I haven't said I want to make it... I'm singing what I want to sing. Well, By listening to you right now, I realize that you have a better voice than I do. Probably we should have a collaboration. What do you think? We won't sell one album. <laughs> Not Means one. that I don't <laughs> sing that well. <laughs> no, because you see, whatever effort you put in, my effort will just simply denigrate <laughs> yours and kill it. It won't happen. I must say it's an honor to have you here. Thank you. You have no idea how long it's been uh, and how much prayer I've invested to have a one-on-one -on -one with you. <laughs> well, I'm happy to be here. Yes. You don't, you hardly grant interviews. And so it's a big honor. And I, 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 I'm actually going to put it in my CV. Uh, oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yes. Well, because I'm, am I supposed to be a newsmaker? Not really. I'm supposed to report the news, not to be the newsmaker. Mm. So maybe it's one of the reasons why I avoid... But for somebody like you, why not? And with Brenda breathing down my neck, <laughs> I mean... She won't let you sleep. She won't let me sleep. No. Grief. 4.30 a.m. She's sending you a message. I have the best producer. Ben. Yeah, in yeah. terms of production, she's good. But for me, the guest is terrible. <laughs> she's a terrorist. She's a terrorist, and she does it so well. You wake up at 5 in the morning, she sent you a message at 11.59, 11.46. I'm like, Brenda, won't you sleep? <laughs> She's like, I need you on my show. <laughs> so I'm here. Brenda has brought me to the slaughter. Thank you so much my for pleasure. honoring this invite. Thank you. And uh, you are an inspiration to so many people out there. I don't know if you actually know how much your journey has inspired people. I guess I'm not able to quantify, but if indeed you say what you say and it is the truth, I'm thankful because I was also inspired by others. Some people have held my hands and helped me on whatever journey that you describe. So if for some reason my journey is an inspiration to others and for others to even do better, I'm on it. I'm happy that I've been able to, no matter how modest it seems, chart a path that others have followed. So at this point is where I blush and say, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look back 30 years ago. 30 years ago, okay. 30 years ago. I was about 23 years old, yeah. Journey had started. Mm-hmm. TV. Yeah. Movies. True. Production. Guilty. Did you envision that you'll ever be where you are today? <laughs> you know what I wanted? What? All I wanted was a job. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, but when you're 23 years old, what are you looking for? I wanted a job. That's all I wanted. I did not envision 30 years later. I wanted a job. Mm. That's the truth. After school, following your passion, flair for writing, flair for speaking, public speaking, a little, little MC here and there, acting on the side, I wanted a job. Mm. That's all I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I got a job. 
It wasn't a full-paying, full-time-paying job, but I was happy to have a job. You know, a lot of people don't remember there was a newspaper called PMP. Yeah, I, I remember PMP. Yeah, I used to write for PMP. Oh, really? Yeah, and most people don't know. <laughs> Which column? Entertainment. Mm. Yeah. And was your name there as Kwame Sifakai? Kwame Sifakai. I was uh, 22, 23 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah, I used to write for PMP. And um, my boss at the time, Nikki Bwamponsem, before her, Nana Fred Dua German. Mm -hmm. uh, then there was Balon Afo, who was like my immediate boss, who's still a friend of mine. You know Ken Crunchy? Yes, I know Ken Crunchy. Ken Crunchy was my colleague at PMP. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We were young men, hustlers. All you needed was a job. All we wanted was a job. We just wanted a job, something to do. So it wasn't about the money that was going to be paid? The money was good. I mean, but we wanted a job. I mean, if you didn't work, you wouldn't get paid. Mm -hmm. So I was shuffling PMP. Dr. Charles Reku Broby had a magazine called Around Ghana. Okay. I used to write for that one as well. And then I was doing GBC as well as mm -hmm. a guest artist. I was doing... Guest artist as what? Well, what today they call um, contract stuff. Okay. Yes. So you are not regularly employed, mm -hmm. but uh, you are assigned to a program. Okay. So I was assigned to a program called Leaders of Tomorrow mm. with Akol Budu Manuel. And then I was doing television production on the side with Moses Japong. I was doing TV theater at the same time. I was doing movies at the same time. Charlie Man was hungry. I needed a job. You were hustling. Anything that would give you food, <laughs> man, I was good to go. But you, it's, mm. it's more or less like fame found you when you were doing all these things. Well, if you want to describe it that way. But I looked at us. When you look back, you want to say fame found you. But for me, it was hard work. <laughs> I mm. mean, it was a lot of hard work. When you look back, when I tell people I was a studio rat, they don't believe it. Oh, yeah, you don't believe it, too. No, I don't. I was sleeping in the studio till daybreak. You? To the... Yeah, me. Why? Ah. Now, pa. <laughs> because I was interested in television production. Okay. And then I liked radio, too. Mm -hmm. And so, because you were not full-time employed, you went to hang around. If it's um, prime morning that is doing, you know, is airing, mm -hmm. you go and help around a bit. After that, if it's the news, then somebody calls you up and says, oh, Charlie, uh, come and do a voiceover for me. Uh, I'm doing, I remember there was a television program called Around Town. And one day, the um, presenter didn't show up. So they said, okay, you, you're not a TV face yet. So you do the voiceover. <laughs> yeah. So I went to the, you know, so. Oh, but when you hear anyway, things like that, when you hear things like that, how does it make you feel you're not a TV face yet? I wanted a job. That's all. That's all you need. So if I'm not a TV face and I'm a radio voice, yeah, let's do the radio. <laughs> so how did you find radio? Or how did radio find Well, you? so um, I always give him credit. He doesn't like you when I do it. But there's a guy called Echo Budu Manuel. Eko Budu Manuel was um, a radio presenter at the time at right. GBC. Hmm? He was also a producer of his own show called Leaders of Tomorrow. And Leaders of Tomorrow was a youth-based program. And he was my friend, you know. He's like um, an older brother. But he was my friend. You know, we hung around GBC, myself, him, Kwekubwa Fajiman, Kwesiche, Dakwa, hmm? Samson, Queen. They were seniors to me, but uh, <clears throat> I used to hang with them. And so I called me like, Charlie, go and do this, go and do the story for me. Uh, go to University of Ghana campus, look for the youth leaders, interview them. This. So he taught me the rudiments of radio production. And I say it always to his credit. If anybody should take credit for my first radio lessons, it's Eko Budu Manuel. So I remember when eventually, and this was GBC. Mm. There was only the GBC. Before you are able to go on air, you must have gone through a certain mm -hmm. rigorous. And then one day, a court says, present. Just like that? Yep. I'd been doing little interviews here and there for him. I was like, I say, can I present to show? This must have been 94. I was like 24 years old. I was like, eh? I say, I'm going to present to show. It went well. It did go well. But what went through your mind? Even though I was 
Never. I was nervous. Mm. I was, and he just gave me his seat. Let's do it. And we we're recording. So we record and play back on mm -hmm. Saturdays. And so we went through the recording. And he was just standing in the window, like looking at me, like, you know, directing me, bring your voice down, relax, sit back. And that was it. And I presented, and it came out well. Mm -hmm. And so he slowly kind of guided me through it. And so then I became a lot more, you know, bold and confident and felt encouraged. Mm -hmm. And I was also doing television at the same time, doing TV theater on the yeah. side, doing movies here and there. And so slowly I started, if you want to say, breaking out of my shell. Mm -hmm. And the late Wallace Bampuado put me, before Wallace Bampuado, there was uh, Mama Jane, Janet Owusu, put me on TV theater with Idi Koko, the mm -hmm. late Majora Namate, uh, Naele Adefio, Kofi Ajololo, Kwesiche Dakwa, quite a host of people, mm -hmm. you know. And then the late Wallace Bampuado gave me my biggest television break, Ultimate Paradise. Right. Yes. Right. You know, and Uncle Wallace, or Kobams as we used to call him those days, he and uh, another one called Alex Ahulu, mm -hmm. he was a very avant-garde kind of director, you know, so it's, it's uh, Charlie Man. When you, oh yeah, you're four, you're quite, but I don't it. <laughs> From, you don't have a, a TV face. They say you so don't have a TV your face. Your face is nice for TV. Yeah, and then I thrust a script in my hand, did a few, you know, a, a kind of audition. Yeah. And then that was my biggest television break. That's when I got to meet Rama Brew, mm -hmm. Michelle, her daughter Michelle, the late Joey Sin Station Master, Mame Dokno, name them. So many people, yeah. Akofe, Jani. Yeah. I don't remember everybody off the top of my head, but all of these people then. So slowly, <clears throat> you're breaking out into television as well. Mm -hmm. And Ultimate Paradise those days was a big deal. It was huge. So from there, movie roles began. Before then, I had done some 102B. You know Ivan Koshiga? Yeah, I do. Yeah, so I did one of his uh, nafti productions with him, Sergeant Tabebrese. I know Sergeant Tabebrese. Yeah. Oh, you were in there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've come a long way, baby. <laughs> We've come a long way. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd done that with Ivan. You know, Ivan is a childhood friend. We right. together. And so I'd done that with him. And uh, there's a gentleman called B.M. Imoro. I don't know where he is today. Okay. You know Uncle Ken, Ken Adi. Mm -hmm. You know Uncle Ken was also into productions Production, back in right. the day. Mm -hmm. We did a movie with him. And, you know, as they say, the rest is history. I remember I did all, you know, Ultimate Paradise movies here. And so so yeah. how did the TV, you know, just end? Because it's like we don't see you on TV again at all. You are now the radio gem. When we talk about radio, it's quite safe, I can't. Morning radio, especially. Yeah, I don't know how TV ended for me. Uh, I don't know. I guess that I kind of fell in love more with radio. I mean, and I hated makeup. I still do. <laughs> <laughs> Probably it's part of the reason why. Okay. I, I hated makeup and I still do. And then um, television is fantastic. But I think there's no myth about television. Television is audiovisual. Mm -hmm. So we're watching you, Rosalind. We see your face. We hear your voice. We know what you look like. But radio is a bit mythical. What does he look like? What's he wearing? Is he eating today? What is he laughing at? Mm. Because radio is just your, you know, sound. Mm -hmm. But then that sound makes you begin to create images in your mind as to the person you're listening to. Mm -hmm. And I guess I began to enjoy that myth you know, the magic of radio, as they say. And don't forget also, radio has a far wider reach. Right, Because yeah. radio is on the go. But with television, you have to sit mm -hmm. and, watch. and watch. But you know, funny enough, um, times have changed. Back in the day, radio was just listening. Now you can actually stream, so we can True. see you. 
Yeah, but it took a long while to get here. Right. A very long while to get here. But I guess also that I was, I've become more suited for radio. And I have loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. Radio was my first love, anyway. Okay. So TV came through at a point. And so let's just say I went back to my first love and I'm stuck and, and with it. it. You're stuck with it. Oh, you, yeah. You cannot move away from radio, never. Uh, it would be difficult. Very difficult. Now, you were out to Radio Gold at a point. Yeah, so from GBC I went to Radio Gold. English. Yep. Where did the transition happen to local? <laughs> because nobody thought you could speak fluent tree. Well, my tree wasn't that fluent. When you started? Yep. <laughs> I would say Peace FM has also taught me a lot of tree. Do you know what monunkum is? Yes. What is that? Um, is the evening dew. Cloud. Yeah. Yes. I didn't know what it was. It sounded like some weird, <laughs> you know. And the first time I walked in there in the year 2000, I was hearing all these things. Ujaframa. <laughs> and I'm like, hello. <laughs> now, the transition also was, Kwame, what are you doing? Mm. May he find rest. Kamala Duma was one of the first people who was. He says, Charlie, you the craze. What did they go do? I say, yeah, they go do radio. He say, Chi. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. Ah, how? I'm like, well, two things would happen. Mm. It will either succeed or fail. Let's give it a shot. Are you that daring? Well, I was younger and foolish. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe today I'll be a bit more sober mm. with risk. But, I mean, hey, I was what, 30? What, what ah, can go wrong? Mm. But I found it also fascinating to broadcast in Chi. Because we generally have this perception that you were below average right. if you broadcast in Chi. Mm -hmm. You are not up to journalistic or broadcasting standards. But I was like, ah, Charlie, why not? Mm. Let's give it a shot. Let's see. Who contacted you from, you know, um, Peace FM to that. actually move? And what was the first thing that crossed your mind when you got that offer that move from English to Chi? It was actually the owner of Despite Media. Wow. Yeah. We had spoken, we met two years prior in 98. I was hosting an event at uh, the National Theatre. And he told me that you <laughs> had this plan and I think you're part of the plan. And then it fizzled out. The conversation didn't continue beyond that. And then he started in the following year. And uh, a year after, well, just about a year after, I got a phone call one day and it's him on the line. There's yeah, okay, I said, I didn't come away two years ago. I say, yeah, hey, <laughs> hey. Of course, other considerations. Um, it was, the money was good. The money was good. Oh, baby, it was good. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> the money was talking at that time. <clears throat> there was money. Mm. There was adventure. And there was trying your hands at something new. It wasn't sexy at the time. So it was a very huge leap of faith. It's paid off, hasn't it? Mm. I'm back on television, English television. <laughs> speaking but, English. Speaking English. So it's paid off. <laughs> and subsequent to that, loads of other stations and broadcasting houses started mm -hmm. doing broadcasting on FM in Lacan. Some have done Ga, some have done ever Gadangme, mm -hmm. Hausa, Dagbani. And it's, I think it's, it was a revolution. And I'm happy that a lot of others have followed that path. You know, mm. when we started it out, it was a 50-50 chance. You either sink or swim. Luckily, we swam. You swam. And others have also followed. Did you have any regrets when you started? No. 
looking back, I don't think I had any regrets. I, I kind of felt, maybe uh, we'll be fine. It was uncharted territory, you know, because apart from GBC One, which was broadcasting in local language, there really was no other thing like that. And <clears throat> Professor Jukum, Openye Jukum, who's a regular on my show, was also doing something on Radio Universe. He was actually the first person who started a newspaper review in Akan. Most people don't know this. Okay. And so I was like, Ebefa. And we had a lot of traction mm -hmm. when we connected with taxi drivers, trotro drivers, market, market women. women, regular everyday mm -hmm. people. And then they all started, be they began to find a home, you know, a broadcast home that, okay, we can discuss national issues in a language we understand. And so the traction was just going like that, mm -hmm. like that. And it became something to look out for. I remember when um, Mr. Safu Mafu became finance minister <clears throat> the year after, and he granted me his first in-studio interview. It was fascinating. You know, he also speaks very fluent tree. Mm -hmm. Here's a man who knows his stuff and is breaking it down in a language everybody understands. Mm -hmm. And so we started shooting for the major interviews, competing with everybody else, as if language was no longer a barrier. Yeah. And then others were like, yay, these people are doing something good. We need to start. Let's start. And then all the others came in. Mm. Let me ask you this before I go to my next main question. Mm. You know, there were speculations, there were um, gossips going around that for you to have accepted the offer to move to Peace FM, <clears throat> you were going to be given shares in the company. So today, <laughs> let's get to know. It's not true. It's not true. No. You know, when you work in the public space for as long as I have and as long as you have, I'm sure you realize that Ghana for Epem Konkonsapa, we like to gossip, we like to say things we have absolutely no idea about and pass it off as truth. And we'll swear that we were there or we heard or we know. So you don't co own pieces? No, I don't. I have an employee. Even till now, you don't yeah. go on. Well, maybe I'm, uh, as my colleague Kukui Obako, maybe I'm a Lionel Messi. <laughs> <laughs> they can't let you go. Yeah, but I don't own Barcelona. <laughs> so I don't own it, no. Right. But um, I happen to be one of the influential people there, mm. both on and off radio. But no, I don't own it. Okay. No, I don't have any shares. I also look forward to my salary at the end of the month. I'm sure you don't believe it, but it's the truth. <laughs> The whole truth and nothing that but the truth. Be. So, so help, help me, me, God. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about mm. how radio has changed over the years. Mm. When you started, things were different. And now it's, it's not the same. Radio has evolved. Personally, I'm happy it's evolved. Except that I think we have not... Um, standards have not been adhered to. Basic broadcasting, journalism media standards. Um, first of all, I think we have too many radio stations. Mm. Way too many. And unfortunately, the kind of quality that you expect from radio usually sometimes is very suspect. Yeah. Unless we don't want to be truthful. Mm -hmm. But I love the evolution. I like the fact that it provides a platform for people, first of all, to showcase their talent, exhibit what they can do. It provides an avenue for information dissemination. It goes to areas that previously would not have had the magic of radio. Right. And so I love that. It's easier now for people to say, I heard it on radio. But in reverse, it is also dangerous. Very true. Because the kinds of stuff that go out could be mm -hmm. very dangerous. So how do we care about <clears throat> that? I mean, the numbers. Because it's going to increase if something is not done about it. Unfortunately, I think when we 
shut out. We did not have rules and regulations properly done or set because it was virgin area. And so it was, as they say, my try my way. Let's give it a shot and see. And so by the time we woke up, there probably were too many. Most of them political. Because you have members of parliament on radio stations, other politicians, ministers of state, business associates of politicians. Let's be honest about it. Mm -hmm. So everybody feels that, oh, let me give a bit to my party people or to people that I'm close to. And so there's a political aspect of it. And then there are those who went into it as a commercial yep. venture, purely a business venture. And so in that, between the two of them, somewhere in there, we should have found proper broadcasting content and standards to guide. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we did not. And we still have not really. Yeah. And so sometimes the uh, things you hear on radio is atrocious to say the least. Yeah. You know, we have a media commission. We have a GJA. We have Media Foundation for West Africa. We have other media watches. But I don't know hmm. what can be done. Unfortunately, we have, um, what's the other one? Uh, the broadcast group. Um, Oh, I can't remember now. Anyway, when I remember. So you ask yourself, what really are the standards? Anybody just gets up and goes on. It's beginning to look like money. If you can afford it, that's it. Yeah, but you see, even if it's money, you can afford it, do it. I think there should be some basic standards yeah. we should all follow. Yeah. You know, uh, for those of us who are in urban areas mostly, mm -hmm. We probably have no idea how horrible it can be when you go out of our comfort zone mm -hmm. and you hear some things on radio in rural or semi-rural areas. You're like, what? That's what they're using radio for. Mm -hmm. But who's watching the no watchman? Control. Who's watching the watchman? That's so yes. It is good that we have plural media, but <laughs> we should have some standards mm. to go with it. I mean. You know, when you were at uh, Radio Gold, people thought you belonged to the NDC. Happens all the time. Uh, when you came to Peace FM, people think you belong to MPP. Happens all the time. Everybody has a political party they love. How have you managed to keep that out of the public domain? Because I'm not a politician. Mm. I'm a journalist. I'm a media practitioner. I'm a broadcaster. Even the electoral commissioner votes for party A or party B. Yeah. So my prime footing out there is not politics. It's not about whether I like party A or I like party B. For me, it's totally irrelevant. Mm. I am here to do my job, do it to the best of my ability. Somebody will say, oh, are you neutral? No, I'm not neutral. I'm fair. I am as fair as I can to the issues on the table, to what we are discussing. But I cannot be neutral. It's, as you know, there's this quotation that is um, attributed to the late Bishop Desmond, Archbishop Desmond Tutu. He says, if a mouse and an elephant were in a fight and you said you were neutral, as far as the mouse is concerned, you're on the side of the elephant. Right. Yes, because I mean, <laughs> it's such a mismatch. Mm. If you will not speak about it or speak against this fight, and you look at us and you say you are, you're neutral. So you cannot be neutral. You can only be fair. Mm -hmm. I've kept it out, as I mentioned, because that is not my prime responsibility. That is not my focus. Election time would all vote, wouldn't mm -hmm. we? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm learning. Uh, I must.